Hey everybody, it's Mr. MathBlog here, and this is on problem solving with common factors. And so this goes along with the book I'm using, uh, Section 5.3 in your Common Core strand is um, um, the CC.4. Dot OA.4, dot which is more uh, operations in algebra uh, and getting yourself familiar with factors and multiples and numbers. Okay, and so the essential question is how can you use uh, uh, the make a list strategy to solve problems with common factors? So we're going to be making lists of factors here shortly. So let's go ahead and get started here. So Sandra uh, has 30 pennies, 24 quarters, and 36 nickels. She wants to arrange the coins in two rows. Each row will have the same number of coins, and all the coins in the row will be the same. So, for example, she's got to have, you know, like uh, five pennies and five quarters and five nickels. They've got to be the same amount, and they all have to be the same coins in each row. How many coins can she put in each row if she is going to use all her coins? Okay, so um, uh, we're going to have to think about all the factors, okay? So here's the essential questions right here. Each row will have the same number of coins, and all the coins in each row has to be the same. So they got to be like a row of pennies, a row of quarters, and a row of nickels. And they all have to be the same, and she has to use them all up. Okay, so what do we need to find out? All right, well, we need to find out uh, common factors um, uh, with 30, 24, and 36 that can go into each row so that each row has the same number of coins and all the coins in each row will match, okay? So we need to list all the factors of 30, all the factors of 24, and all the factors of 36 and find out what do they all have in common. So what information do I need to use? Well, Sander has uh, 30 pennies, 24 quarters, and 36 nickels, and each row has to have the same number of coins, and all the rows have to have the same coins, okay? So it's a lot of repetition here, but I'm just trying to be consistent with uh, the textbook I'm using, and they ask uh, these questions. So let's go ahead and, um, so, um, uh, so how am I going to use this information? I'm going to make a, a list and find all the factors of those numbers, 30, 24, and 36. Then I can use the list to find a common factor. Okay, and common factors you're going to be using for the rest of your uh, math uh, life here. Common factors, and doesn't that sound funny, your rest of your math life? Well, if you guys are going to go on into high school, you're going to be taking lots of math, and hopefully I might see one or two of you uh, in my high school math classes. So a common factor is just a factor that each number shares, okay? So they got to be common. So remember from the last le lesson, here are some shortcuts for a divisibility rule. A number is divisible by 2 if it's even. It's divisible by 3 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. So we add up the digits and see if uh, 3 goes into the sum. It's divisible by 5 if the last digit is 0 or 5. It's divisible by 6 if it's divisible by 2 and 3. Okay? It's divisible by 9 if the sum of the digits is divisible by 9. So it's like the 3 rule, but, you, but it's got to be the sum has to be divisible by 9. And then 10 also, I didn't include 10, but we kind of knew that. If the last number is 0, then 10 is also a factor. So these are all factors of numbers. And they, uh, if, if it happens that these are the cases, then these numbers go into it. Otherwise, we've got to do the long division. And I don't think I have any of that in this lesson. So here we go. Let's go back to Sandra here. So here's the list of factors of 30. Remember, she has 30 pennies. Okay, so all the factors of 30. 1 goes into 30. 2 goes into 30 because it's even. 3 plus 0 is 3, so 3 goes into 3, so 3 goes into 30. It ends in 0, so 5 goes into 30. 6 goes into 30 because 2 and 3 does. 10 goes into 30 because it ends in 0. And then i got to start thinking, okay, 2 times 15 gets me 30, and then 1 times uh, 30 gets me 30. And as long as you do it in order, you guys, these two multiply to get 30, then the next two multiply to get 30, then the next two multiply to get 30, and 5 times 6 is also 30. All right, all right, now let's do factors of 24, you guys. So factors of 24. 1 goes into 24, 2 does, 3 does, 4 does, 6 does, 8 does. I, I know 8 because I know my multiples really well, but you can just figure, you know, 3 times what gets me 24, 3 times 8. Okay, and then 2 times what gets me 24, 2 times 12. And then finally 1 times 24. All right, and I still got 36, so let's list all the factors of 36 right there. There they are. Okay, and then we got to see the ones that they have in common with all of them, okay? They have to be with all of them. So they all have ones, they all have twos, they all have threes, and they all have sixes. So these are the amounts I can have in each row. 
So they'll be the same number in each row, and uh, they will all be the, um, uh, the same kind of coins, okay? So Sandra uh, can put one, two, three, or six coins in each row. It's just these numbers. They're common factors, you guys, and that'll use up all her coins right there, okay? All right, let's try another one, you guys. So here's Sammy. Sammy has 50 pencils, 30 erasers, and 100 paper clips. Oh, boy! And he organizes, I should have put she, because um, uh, Sammy is a she in my mind, so I should put she, uh, organizes them into groups with the same number of items in each group. Okay, so all the items in the group will be of the same type. So this is just like the coins, the same kind of coin. How many items can uh, he put in each group? Okay, so we, what we got to do is find uh, common multiples again of those numbers right there. So... What do I need to find? Well, like the last problem, I need to find the common multiples of the three numbers, 50, 30, and 100, so I can organize these into groups with the same number of items in each group. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and what information do I need? I need to use the, the 50, the 30, and the 100, and list all the factors of each number. Okay, so here's my divisibility rule again. So um, uh, just a quick trick and, 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 and get used to these. You guys are going to use these forever, hopefully. Um, those of you guys that want to be successful. So here's factors of 50. Okay, 1 goes into it. It's even, so 2 goes into it. 5 goes into it because it's 0. 10 goes into it because it's 0. And then um, uh, 25 gets me the 2, 2 times 25, and 50 times 1. So there's the factors of 50. Okay, here's the factors of 30. All right, and then here's the factors of 100. All right. So I know 20 times 5, these two guys have to patch, uh, match up right here. And then 4 times, you know, 4 quarters gets me a dollar. So 4 times uh, 25 is 100. And then 2 times 50 and 1 times 100. Okay. So now all the ones that they have in common are 1, 2, 5, and 10. Okay. So Sammy uh, can put uh, 1, 2, 5, or 10 items into each row. All right. All right, let's try another one, you guys. Here's another great problem. Ginger, she knits uh, 10 squares a day for seven days. Can she sew? Isn't that a funny way to spell sew? Can she sew? Can she sew? <laughs> Together, the squares to make five equal size blankets and explain. Okay, well, I had to do this, you guys. Here's day one. Here's her 10 squares right there, okay? So she's doing this for seven days so there's day two ten more squares there's day three ten more squares and there's the rest of the seven days right there okay so what that makes is ten by seven or seventy squares right there so if she's gonna make five equal size blankets and she has seventy total squares can she do it well seventy divided by five equals fourteen so can she make blankets that are size fourteen well you bet two by seven Okay, so yes, yeah, seven uh, by seven days, Ginger's going to have made 70 squares. Here's my 70 squares. So to make five equal blankets, you're going to need 14 of those squares each. So each blanket will have to be two squares by seven squares. Two times seven would be 14. Okay, all right, let's, let's uh, try another one here. This is a, one of my favorite ones here. I often talk about this in my class because uh, students, um, uh, they don't realize what a per perfect number is. A number is called a perfect number if it's equal to the sum of all its factors except itself. So, for example, 6 is called a perfect number because the factors of 6 are 1 goes into 6, 2 goes into 6, 3 goes into 6, and 6 goes into 6. Okay, but we can't include the number 6, okay? So what we're going to do is add up the other digits. So all the other um, factors, excluding the number itself, adds up to this number. Okay, so uh, 1 plus 2 plus 3 add up to 6, and that's why it's called a perfect number, because its factors, besides itself, add up to itself. So what's the next perfect number? Okay, so what I did is I listed some of them right here. So here's the factors of 8, okay? Factors of 8. I should have put 9 in there too, you guys. 9 is uh, 1 uh, and 3 goes into 9 and then finally 9 goes into 9. Okay, so uh, here's the factors of 8. And again, I should have put 9 in there. 9 would have been 1, 3, 9. Okay, here's the factors of 10. Here's the factors of 12. And notice I, I, I excluded itself. So that's why these ones are all red because I can't use these ones when I'm adding them up. I'm just going to add, so 1 plus 2 plus 4. What's 1 plus 2 plus 4? 
Okay, that's equal to 7. That's not equal to 8, so 8 is not called a perfect number. 9, let's see, 9 would have been 1 plus 3, which is 4. You know, I can't use 9, so 1 plus 3 is 4, so 9 is not a perfect number. Okay, 10, it's a perfect square, but it's not a perfect number, which is later, later on uh, in your math. Okay, 10, uh, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 5 is uh, 8. That's not a perfect number. So here's the sum of all of these numbers right here. Okay, and notice none of these numbers are the number that I started with over here. So none of these numbers are 8, 10, 12, 14, 15, 16, 18. They're not perfect numbers. So you keep going, you guys, and you think, okay, I wouldn't do 19 because 19 is, this, is, is called a prime number. It's only 19 times 1. Uh, 20, I'd try 20. I'd try 21. I'd try 22. I wouldn't try 23 because that's prime. You don't need to worry about that. So you keep going. And you find the next perfect number for me. Can you do that, you guys? And I'll give you a hint. It's under 35. And no peeking, you guys. All right? All right, if you like this and this helped you, please uh, click like, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Take care, you guys.